Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss the morphology of the mandibular second premolar. So the mandibular second premolars, they erupt distal to the first premolar. So these are the mandibular second premolars. So these teeth, they replace the mandibular second deciduous molars. These teeth usually have three cusps that I'll explain in detail later. That's why the term bicuspid for the premolars is not correct because the mandibular second premolars usually have three cusps. These teeth, the mandibular second premolars, they emerge into the oral cavity at the age of 11 to 12 years and the root completion is at the age of 13 to 14 years. These are the mandibular second premolars. This premolar is of the right side and this premolar is of the left side. In the mandibular second premolar, the buccal cusp tip is shorter and it is less pointed if you compare it with the first premolar. The crown and the root are broader mesiodistally as compared to the first premolar. The root ends in an apex that is more blunt as compared to the first premolar and the root usually curves slightly in a distal direction. This is the lingual aspect of the mandibular second premolar. The lingual cusps are larger as compared to the single lingual cusp of the first premolar. Therefore, less of the occlusal surface is visible from the lingual aspect of this tooth. There are two lingual cusps. This one is the mesiolingual cusp, which is larger and more wider as compared to a smaller distolingual cusp. In between the mesiolingual and the distolingual cusp, there is a groove known as the lingual developmental groove. This tooth has a very less taper on the lingual side, therefore less of the mesial and distal surface is visible from this aspect as compared to the first premolar. This is the mesial aspect. This is the buccal cusp which is shorter as compared to the first premolar. And this cusp, the buccal cusp, has a very little lingual inclination. The crown and the root are wider buccolingually as compared to the first premolar. This ridge between the buccal cusp and joining the mesiolingual cusp is the mesial marginal wedge. It is perpendicular on 90 degree to the long axis of the tooth. So this is nearly straight. So from the distal aspect, this cusp is the is the buccal cusp and this cusp this is smaller cusp is the distolingual cusp and in the background this is the mesiolingual cusp so the distal marginal ridge is more cervically located more near the cervical line as compared to the mesial marginal ridge because of the shorter distolingual cusp on the root surface there is a depression there's a developmental depression. Otherwise, the crown is very much similar as compared to the mesial aspect. Uh, this is the occlusal surface. So this is a three cusp type mandibular second premolar, which is more frequent. This, the largest cusp is the buccal cusp. The next one, the next cusp is the mesiolingual cusp and the smallest cusp is the distolingual cusp. So the crown outline is square shape. This is the central pit which is located at the junction of the central groove and this groove is the lingual groove. So the central groove and the lingual groove they form a Y-shaped pattern. So this tooth has more supplementary grooves as compared to the first premolar. There are two fossa on the occlusal surface. This fossa is the distal fossa, which is larger as compared to the mesial, mesial fossa, which is smaller. 
For more details, you can see the description in which I have uploaded a presentation for you. Uh, please give me your feedback uh, in, in the comments. Thank you very much for watching.